2.6, day 12, notes. I'm talking about concavity. These are the last notes for chapter 2. Well, concavity is a, a new concept, though. We didn't talk about in Algebra 2, so it is, it is new to pre-calc. Um, so, in general, it just means, how is the graph curving? How is the graph curving? I guess the root word you think of caving. Um, and there's four basic types of... Uh, of graph curves that would look at. So four basic types of graph curvature. So I'll draw a rough sketch of all four. So there's my first one. Increasing there. That kind of curve. Next one, similar, just decreasing, curving. Notice these aren't linear, these aren't lines, they're actually curving. Third one, it's like decreasing and it's got a curve. Fourth one, and it's curved up. So those are our four basic types of curvature for our graphs. Okay, so what can we observe about all four of these? Well, let's identify the ones that are like increasing or decreasing. So this first one, that's definitely increasing. If you read it from left to right, it is most definitely increasing. It starts low ends up high, so it was increasing for sure. I know it's a curve, but it still started low and ended up high, so it's increasing from left to right. Okay, and this one's actually related to the second one here on the right, but I know that one's decreasing. Okay, so that one's increasing, that one's decreasing. Obviously that one's decreasing from left to right, and the last one here, that would be increasing. But So these two are related, they're special. So when we classify these graphs, they're going to be either concave up or concave down. So in the case of these two, this one's increasing, this, de this one's decreasing, but they're both concave down. So both these types of graphs are concave down. Okay, so now what does it mean to be concave down? Well, here's the way I like to think about it. Uh, whether it's increasing, whether it's decreasing, um, one... Both of these graphs have like a downward trend in their curve. So you could think about it as like a, a smiley face. So I could just like, for this graph here, if I could just like extend the smiley face, and actually this one would be a frowny face, right? So notice the, like the downward curve on the frown. And you could do the same thing for this graph. Draw a little mouth. So like the frowny face. That would be the downward curve. So these are both concave down, although one was increasing, one was decreasing. Okay, let me erase those nice little smiley faces there. The other way I like to think about it is um, if there's uh, if these are like roofs on a house, if it was raining, the water would slide right off. It would not hold water. So how can I simulate some rain here? Let's start with this graph. Here's my here's my little raindrops. You don't have to draw these, but just to get the idea, the water would just slide right off the side. It would not pool. It, wouldn't, it couldn't hold any water that way. Uh, and the same thing holds for this graph. If it starts raining on it, the water just simply slides right off. It doesn't hold water. As opposed to these two graphs on the right, which start to hold water or pool up. Concave down, water would just go right off. Or you could also think about it as the frowny face, too, the downward curve. Okay, so let's look at these two graphs on the right then. So this one, the third one, it's definitely decreasing from left to right. Um, and then the fourth one is definitely increasing from left to right. So notice I color code that, decreasing in red, increasing in green. So the reason they're related, you guessed it, they're both concave up. So these graphs are both concave up. Um, and let's, let's start with the smiley face again. So now these are both going to make smiles, right? These aren't going to make the frowns. These, are bo these will both make smiles. So you can think of each one as being part of that smiley face. There's a smiley face on the decreasing graph and on the increasing graph. There you go. There's a smiley face there too. So these, these both smile. So concave up, they both have the upward smile trend. Okay? And again, you don't have to draw that as long as you see the pattern. You don't have to make your graphs look all goofy like mine do. 
It's like I said, undo, and we're good. Okay? So how about the water? So the water, if it's raining on these types of graphs, you can think of them as being like maybe a bowl that would pool up, maybe it would hold water. It wouldn't just slide off the side. So the same for this guy. If this is raining, it would fill up the bowl, it would hold water, it wouldn't just slide off like the other two. So that's concave up. You can think of it as an upward smiley face or something that would actually hold water. Okay, so uh, let's get a little bit more formal with our definition for concave up and concave down. To start out, the concave up graph, it has this trait. The rates of change, like points on the graph, the rates of change are increasing from left to right. So think back to what rates of change are. Those are just slopes. So if you're picking points um, on the graph, the slopes are increasing from left to right. Okay, so that's for concave up. That's the smiley face. That's the one that holds water. So whether it's this one, increasing concave up, or it's the one on the right here that's decreasing concave up. Either way, those are both concave up. So um, another way you can think about it is it curves upward, right? Put that in quotes. That's a way to think about it. Or um, you could say it bends, or even you could say it cups upward, like it would hold water, perhaps. So if you look at these two graphs, this one's easy to tell that the slopes are increasing. It's like curving a little sharp, a little sharp, increasing, increasing, increasing. So that's how you can tell it's curving. Definitely, definitely the points between here, the slopes will be increasing. This one, it's maybe not as obvious, but it starts out going really negative, and then it becomes less negative, less negative, less negative. So that's actually increasing rates of change also. It starts out really negative and becomes less negative, like more towards zero slope. So that's increasing rates of change also. Okay, so what about um, concave down? definition of concave down. You could probably come up with it just based off this one. So those, the rates of change would just be decreasing from left to right. Rates of change are decreasing from left to right. Um, the same idea applies. So this one, this one, man, it starts out increasing but then it stops increasing so much, flattens out, stops increasing, stops. In. So that's what is that doing? It's actually decreasing. So it starts out going really strong, not so strong, not so strong, not so strong. So the rates of change on this graph will be decreasing. That's why it's concave down. This one, easy to tell. Um, the rates of change really just start decreasing because this is a decreasing graph. Okay, so same thought uh, as before. You could say it curves downward or it bends or cups downward. Okay, so we got concave up, we got concave down, but what about the case when this, the graph's neither one of those? It's not concave up, it's not concave down. It's a special case. So this, this um, describes curvature. So what about when it's neither, it's neither one? Can't be concave up or concave down. When does that happen? Well, essentially, when we don't have curves in our graph. So think to yourself, what kind of graphs don't have curves in them? Should just be a line. So it's neither concave up or concave concave down when the graph is just a line. And why is that? Well, a line can't have like increasing rates of change or decreasing rates of change like these curves can have. Because a line has a constant rate of change. That's the point. So because the AROC, just call that the average rate of change, is constant for a line. So it doesn't have rates of change that are like varying. They're, they're always the same. It's constant. So lines don't curve at all. That's the point. They don't have rates of change that are moving around and changing. That's what makes for curves. And lines aren't curved. Okay, let's look at the first example here. I'm going to make a little table with 
x and f of x, so let's just put some points in here. My x coordinates, negative 3, 0, 2, and 3. Y coordinates, 0 0.5, negative 1, 3, and 6.5. So without doing anything else, we're going to try to say, um, is this concave up or concave down? And here's how you do that algebraically. Here's the trick. So if we're going to evaluate concavity, if we're going to look at the concavity for this graph, whether it's concave up or concave down. The goal, what we have to do, is find the rate of change, or the slope. So find the rate of change for successive terms. Okay, so successive would mean like um, in order. So x's go from smaller to bigger. They're just in order. Okay, so we find the rate of change for successive terms. So let's start with the first point here. So negative 3 comma 0.5 and 0 comma negative 1. Let's find the slope between these two points. So you got your xy and your xy. So slope, that's the change in the y's over the change in the x's, so that shouldn't be too bad. So negative 1 minus 0, 0.5 over 0 minus negative 3. Well, that's nice and slow. So what do you get? Uh, I think negative 0.5 is the result. So we found the rate of change between these two points. Now we've got to find the rate of change between these two points. And then we'll find the rate of change between these two points. So that's what we're talking about for successive rates of change. So we go down the line x are getting bigger, we just go down the line and find the slope between these two points. I'm going to color code it too. So let's do the slope for the next pair of points there. So 0, negative 1, and 2, 3. So 3 minus negative 1 over 2 minus 0. So that should be 4 over 2, which is 2. So already the slope between those two points has gotten much bigger because 2 is a lot bigger than negative 0.5. Okay, and then one more pair of points. Let's find the slope between 2, 3 and 3, comma 6.5. So that's going to be in blue here. Let's find the last slope there. So 6.5 minus 3 over 3 minus 2, and that should give us 3.5. Okay, so why do we do that? What's the whole point? Because if you think about the definition of concavity, if we look at these rates of change, how are, the, how are they changing? How are these slopes changing for successive terms? That's the whole point. Well, from here to here, it was definitely increasing because it went from negative 0.5 to 2. And then again, from 2 to 3.5, between those two slopes, it increased as well. So if you notice that, the rate of change is increasing between points. So right, right then we just proved that this has got to be concave up. So what's our justification? Since the rates of change, since those things are increasing, they're increasing for successive terms. That's the whole point. Since they're increasing for successive terms, the graph is concave up. Okay, now let's, uh, we, uh, we did this for the table. Let's look at the graph really quick, the graph of f of x. Let's plot these points and make a sketch. So I want to make mine pretty big so we can, um, we can get a really good picture of this. So I got negative 3, comma, 0 0.5. I got 0, negative 1. I got 2, 3. And I got 3, 6.5. And then here's my graph, kind of a weird... Um, not really parabolic because it's not very symmetric, but this is what I'm this is what I'm working with right now. Okay, now it's kind of easy to tell it's concave up, right? I mean, it would it would hold water in here, right? Concave up, it's a smiley face. But let's let's look at the slopes for a second. So the slope between the first two points, I did it in green. Now I want to draw it here in green. Okay, so. 
the slope was negative 0.5 between those first two points. So notice this. I just traced it from negative 3.5 to 0, negative 1. We said the, the slope between those two points, like this little dotted line, that was negative 0.5, right? Okay. And then the slope between the next two, I'll do that in purple since I did it in purple right here. We said that was 2. So from 0, negative 1 to 2, 3. We said the slope between those two points was 2. And then the last pair of points, we said the slope in blue was 3.5. Whoops, there we go. So between the last two points there, the slope is 3.5. I need to add that 0.5 in there, don't I? There we go. So now we actually have a visual. Slope is negative 0.5, and then it increases to 0.2, then it increases to 3.5, and this is what really makes this thing curve between points. So that's the rate of change between these points, and since they're increasing, that's the definition of concave up. All right, example two. Um, we're going to start with a really easy function, y equals x squared. So we all know we can sketch a nice little parabola, because you know what that looks like. So I want to just ask you a couple of things about this graph. First of all, I want to know, can you tell me where it's increasing and where it's decreasing? Because we already talked about that. And then can you tell me where it's concave up or concave down? So where is it increasing, first of all? Okay, well, if you're reading this graph from left to right, which we're supposed to, if you're reading it from left to right, this part is not increasing. So if you come from left to right, notice how it like rides the graph down. It's going down. So that part is not increasing. But the right hand here, that part's definitely going up. That part is definitely increasing. So it's increasing on this interval when it's going up from left to right. So that would just be 0 to infinity. That's where it's increasing. Okay, so what about where it's decreasing? Well, I guess that has, that has to be the left hand. That has to be everywhere else, right? So where is it decreasing? All this stuff on the left-hand side is just coming down from left to right. And that's how we read it. From left to right, what's it doing? This left hand is coming down. So I just drew that with a red arrow here. So it's decreasing on this interval. So that would be negative infinity up to zero. Okay. Uh, example three. We did x squared. Why don't we, why don't we do um, x cubed? So that's like a parabola going up to the right and then split and the other half of the parabola going down to the left. So you've seen this graph before. Um, I want to ask you the same question. Where is it increasing? Where is it decreasing? Concave up, concave down. So for the increasing interval, this one actually, if you read it from left to right, we start reading from left to right, it looks like you're always riding the train upwards. It's always got an upward trend from left to right. So actually, it's increasing all the time. So if you're reading from left to right, it's always increasing. So that would just be negative infinity to infinity. And then if it's increasing everywhere, you really have to talk about decreasing. There are no intervals. There's no intervals where it's actually decreasing. So decreasing, none. Doesn't do any of that. Okay, what about concave up, concave down? Okay, so concave up would really only be this type of curve at the positive right hand here. That's the only time it would be concave up. So I'm going to highlight that one in blue. That, that would be the concave up piece. It would hold water, be the upward smiley face trend. So that would be zero to infinity. And then the other piece, like the opposite left hand of the parabola, I can highlight that with pink. That's the part that's concave down. So this piece, concave down. So negative infinity to zero, it's concave down on that piece. Concave up is zero to infinity. Okay, uh, my only other question is this. What happens um, for this graph? What happens at zero? So you notice it definitely switched. It was going concave down, and now it's concave up. So it switched right there. That's a special point. So I'm going I'm to give it some red color. We call that the inflection point or the point of inflection. So just by this graph you can tell that's where it switches concavity. 
So it went from concave down to concave up. The point at which it did that, that's called the inflection point. Okay, so let's give a brief definition for inflection point. That's just a point where the graph changes concavity. So it could go from concave up to concave down or vice versa. That's the point where a graph changes concavity. Uh, example four. This is the last example. It's a word problem. So let's start here. After a cup of, a cup of hot chocolate, I'm going to say hot coffee because you know me. After a cup of hot chocolate is poured, the temperature cools. It cools off rapidly at first. So you pour a cup of hot chocolate, it cools off rapidly at first, and then it cools off more slowly, eventually reaching room temperature. So if you were to graph this type of function, like temperature versus time, would it be increasing or decreasing? And would it be concave up or concave down? So that's what I want to ask you. Would this be increasing or decreasing, concave up, concave down? Well, let's think about uh, the axes here. On the x-axis, that would definitely be time. That's definitely the independent variable. Then the y-axis would have to be the temperature. So it starts out really hot for sure, and it cools off really fast to start out, but then it kind of slows down and levels out, and eventually just kind of levels out there at room temperature. So let's maybe a rough sketch here. Maybe it does this. starts out really hot, ink decreasing really fast, cooling off, and then it just kind of levels out, levels out, levels out, and eventually it'll reach room temperature somewhere in there. So if this is the type of idea, you should be able to picture it in your mind. Right? You should be able to come up with this on your own. Temperature versus time, cools off real fast, then kind of kind of mellows out. So if you can picture that, then you can answer these questions. This trend is definitely decreasing. It's definitely decreasing. And since, look at this curvature, right? It's like a smiley face, or maybe it would hold water. This would definitely also be concave up. So from this word problem, could you picture the scenario like the type of graph? and identify increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down. All right, that's all for these notes. That's all for the chapter notes. I'll see you in class.